Railway Infrastructure Introduction The infrastructure of a railway is a complex and multidisciplinary engineering system involving earthworks, bridges, tunnels, steelwork, timber, and track system to form the base upon which the railway runs. To give a train a good ride, the track alignment must be set to within a millimeter of the design. Many different systems exist throughout the world and there are many variations in their performance and maintenance. This video looks at the basics of infrastructure and track design and construction with drawings, photos and examples from around the world. Some railway management systems include signaling, stations and electric power supply systems as part of the infrastructure too. Background, the track is a fundamental part of the railway infrastructure and represents the primary distinction between this form of land transportation and all others in that it provides a fixed guidance system. The track is the steering base for the train and has evolved from an ancient design of vehicle guidance with origins dating, some historians have suggested, from the Sumerian culture of 2000 BC. The modern railway version is based on a steel wheel running on a steel rail. Other forms of guided vehicle technology exist, rubber-tired trains, magnetic levitation and guided busways, for example, but these are not dealt with in this video. Basic Construction Track is the most obvious part of a railway route but there is a substructure supporting the track which is equally as important in ensuring a safe and comfortable ride for the train and its passengers or freight. The substructure, this part of the road consists of three main elements, the formation, the sub-ballast and the ballast. The formation is the ground upon which the track will be laid. It can be the natural ground level or grade, or it can be an embankment or cutting. It is important that the formation is made of the right materials and is properly compacted to carry the loads of passing trains. The formation under the track has a camber, rather like that seen on a roadway. This is to ensure ease of water runoff to the drains provided on each side of the line. The track itself is supported on ballast, made up of stones usually granite or, in the US, basalt below which is a layer of sand, which separates it from the formation. For new or renewed formations, the sand is normally laid over some sort of geotechnical screen or mesh to separate it from the foundation material below. In the past, Asphalt or plastic sheeting has been used to prevent water seepage. This diagram shows the principal parts of an electrified, double track line. The total width across the two track alignment will be about 15 meters, 50 feet, for a modern formation. The cess, shown each side of the alignment, is the area available for a walkway or refuge for staff working on the track. Protection usually, the edge of the railway property is outside the pathway or cable runs. If the line is built through an area requiring an embankment or cutting, the slopes will be carefully designed to ensure that the angle of slope will not take an excessive width of land and allow proper drainage, but without risking an earth slip. The slope angle depends on the type of soil available. The exposure, the climate, and the vegetation in the area. Drainage ditches are often added along the edges of cuttings and embankments. In the UK, Fences are always provided along the boundary line of the railway to protect the public from wandering onto the track. Even so, there are a few accidents every year when trespassers are killed or injured by trains or electric conductor rails. Many countries around the world don't fence their railways, assuming people will treat them like roads and look both ways before crossing. They often don't.